Hey you two friends, let me show you my next project, the one I really don't want to do. This is a uh, 1994 um, Toshiba 26 inch television that was in our armoire in the living room and it stopped working. Just, it's dead. When you hit the button in the front, it doesn't do anything. It uh, Sometimes you hear something momentary like it wants to work. It, once in a while you hear the relay click in it but it doesn't engage or something it doesn't work so you know what is it the power supply um, or whatnot I don't know what's wrong with it but we're gonna have to determine what's wrong with the thing this is um, from 1994 and it's pretty it's a fairly large set I mean I can't get back far enough here to show it and it says MTS stereo. It's a good set. It has an excellent picture. Part it does have a problem though with vertical linearity. It's kind of a little bit off where the where the top was stretched out a little bit and the bottom was kind of shrunk down. So I guess I could uh, take care of that when I take care of the problem why it doesn't power up. So um, let me show you what I've done so far on it. I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, that's where the TV was, and um, let me show you where the schematic is here. I got this schematic from servicemanuals.net, and it costs 16 bucks. It was watching, wasn't too bad because no shipping's involved. It was all something you could download to your PC. And they give you a coupon for your next purchase, so that's pretty good. So we got um, a power cord, and it goes in there. We got the fuse, 5 amp, 250 volt fuse. And we got a varistor there. And we got a resistor, goes to ground. And we got a cap, 4700 microfarad cap. It's pretty big. Another 4700 microfarad. At least I think that's what it means. It's 4,700. AC 400 volts. Uh, goes to ground. There's another resistor. So this is something about um, uh, power suppression, noise suppression. And then, um, let's see. I think it's always good to look at a schematic. It's kind of idea what's like inside of the set. And then we got, um, uh, what's that? This is a um, protection cap there, goes across the AC. And I'm thinking when I work on this set, I think I may just replace the protection cap and the varistor, because you know it's like two parts gonna get weakened after like 18 years. I have to put like new ones in. I can inspect the caps here, make sure they they look okay. Uh, I was reading about this. Sometimes these caps. Uh, electrolytic caps that kind of swell up on top and they should be replaced if they start swelling. Let's see, we have it, power goes through this thing here, which looks like a sideways transformer. I'm not that familiar with what this part actually does. Because here's the input and it looks like a transformer, how they made it. It looks like they wanted to put taps here, but they're not tapped. And then it comes back out like that. It's, it's kind of interesting. Then, uh, let's see, the power goes here. You get the transformer. Transformer here. Then here. Here's our, here's our relay contacts here. Here's our relay. Let's see, here's a here's a transistor here. Point with something here. Let's see, this transistor kind of turns on this transistor. And this says this is the relay drive transistor here. So that turns the juice on for the relay to energize the relay coil. And then we have uh, this diode here is a protection diode. And that's 
they put that in there because when the fuel collapses on this winding, uh, you know, it could make, um, you know, current that could go into the transistor and blow the transistor. You get like a voltage spike when the magnetic field collapses. You know, how, how it works with magnetic windings. So they put this uh, protection diode in to make a circuit so that uh, it will uh, have a current go through the diode and the uh, winding and that way it protects the the um, voltage from spiking through here because if, if the magnetic field collapsed very very quickly like instantaneously you'll get a spike that could spike the rest of your electronics so I just wanted to mention that that's what that is that's a protection diode that goes right on the uh, on the relay coil now the thing is that I was um, reading about this set here and I did find uh, someone with like a similar problem and the suggestion that uh, I was like on a ham radio forum and they said uh, replace the relay and I guess some certain capacitors that were in there it wasn't my set but it was a similar Toshiba set so I figured what I did was I just ordered a relay straight off for the thing and it was 12 bucks and it was really hard to find like no one has it and the only one who had it was Sears Sears appliances or Sears um, wherever arm they have that uh, supplies components uh, they had it I haven't figured out why Sears had it but no one has it and no one even has generic for this thing um, it's a DG1U-12 12 volt relay and uh, no one has it no one even has like Mauser don't have it and uh, Newark Electronics don't have it uh, someone in the UK had it but I figured I'd just get one and just shove it in the set because um, you know even if that's not the, the part I'm going through all the trouble like replacing it like if this transistor is bad or something um, I might as well replace that too because um, it's 12 like I said it's 12 bucks and the thing's been in there 18 years and I mean I don't know so anyway I'm going to go back to the set and I'll show you what the thing does or doesn't do. Okay, we're back in my uh, 90 plus degree garage. And I'll be honest with you, the air is kind of thin in here. It's funny, it's so hot. It's like the air is thin. Which really makes no sense. So, uh, let's see, here's the set. Let's plug it in here. Now I'm just going to plug it straight into the strip. If I work on this set, or when I work on it, I'm going to run it through the isolation transformer as usual. And uh, let me tell you something right off the bat about sets like this. This thing generates uh, 28 kilovolts for the for the high voltage for the color, and that's gonna that's enough to really really kill you easy. And besides that. Uh, you got the x-ray warning. I mean 28 kilovolts. You're going to get x-rays out the yin-yang and something like this. And the other thing you really got to, when you take the back off something like this, you got to discharge the anode, which is the, the the glass part, you know, of the pitcher tube. You got to discharge that to ground so you really don't get zapped. And you should wear like probably like long sleeve shirt, some kind of gloves case the two breaks and definitely something like uh, eye protection like safety goggles the kind of goggles that go like over your face you know not just like glasses goggles but goggle goggles all right let's see what this thing does or doesn't do turn it on Okay, the light went on, and it didn't do that before. Okay, great. Okay, now it's working. Okay, so that's weird. Okay, what I did with this thing, I, pl I plunked it down on the counter, on the workbench, and now the thing is working. 
So now it's like, well, how do you fix a set that doesn't turn on, but now it's turning on? Well, if you, the, if you look at the retrace lines, now I got the thing scanning. There's really nothing to scan. I turn it off. Turn it back on. Yes, the retrace lines are more spread out on like the top half than the bottom half. It's hard to tell because this really isn't a picture. But you should be able to see the retrace lines. But it's um it's uh the linearity is off, so I gotta I gotta work on that. So I gotta pull the set apart. I think it's like component change like in capacitors, so I'm gonna replace the capacitors in the vertical to uh, see if that helps. I'm going to investigate the schematic too and see if there's adjustments for the uh, for the linearity too. And uh, I don't know, you know, this uh, pitcher tube being like 20 kilovolts, bringing close in here. You know, I just want to mention that this. This video is going to be for like entertainment purposes only and I don't want anyone to like do any of this kind of work because I think it's kind of dangerous for just anyone working on something like this because the picture tube if it implodes uh, it's really going to mess you up. So anyway that's it. So I'll be back again with this set when I get the relay in because it's really looking like it's the relay now because when I plunked it on it must have jarred something. Or it's something like um, a bad solder joint. So that's it, folks. Have a great day. Bye.